Hello friends! Welcome to this week's video, and today we're going to be talking about bibliomancy, a method of divination using books. Traditionally, it was done with the Bible, hence biblio, library, Bible, collection of books. They go hand in hand. Although in modern times it has expanded to be used in a variety of other ways. So, let's get into it. The way I was first introduced to bibliomancy, which my father would disagree that this isn't bibliomancy, but it's really what it was, when the missionaries would come over for dinner, because being raised Mormon, you feed the missionaries, one of the things that he would have them do is one companion would flip open the scriptures without looking at it, put his finger down, and then the other companion had to explain how that scripture applied to the family. So with what I just did, because I was looking at you, not at the book, uh, Micah verse 3. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, against this family I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go haughtily, for this is the time of evil. Well, out of context, that's rather intimidating. <laughs> One of the other things about bibliomancy is it's okay to look around for the context of that statement. In this case, the book of Micah, this is a prophecy about the downfall of Israel. And if you look about who that family is, it says, Woe unto them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it, because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. And so they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. In other words... Don't be a dick. Because <laughs> there are consequences to that. If you treat people badly, there will be consequences. So that's the first way that I was taught. Even though my father would disagree. But one of the other methods is if you ever have a book fall off a shelf in an open position, check out that page. Someone's probably trying to give you a message. Your selection of books can also change what kind of message you get. Some of the books that I really like using, outside of the Bible, are dictionaries. Because that just gives you a word. A single word to apply to your situation. Also, readings like this, when you're using bibliomancy, typically work best if you start with a question. So, one of the questions that I've been pondering recently is, should I rent a space to be working out of, or should I continue working from home and building an online business? So, you need to phrase your questions in a way that could be answered from a single word. In this case, I would rephrase my, my larger question into, is now the right time to be looking for a business space to rent, to open a shop? So I'm going to flip open the book, put my finger down. Hmm. And the word I got is rack, specifically the version of being racked with pain. That sounds like a no to me. So that's how I use a dictionary for it. But then there are also ways using mythologies. I will grab the Irish folk and fairy tales because I have a lot of Irish ancestry. And so you do the same thing. You just flip open and see what story you're given. Okay, so the henpecked giant. I haven't read this one before, so... 
Ooh, and it's a longer one. So I will read this real quick, and then I'll get back to you to see how it applies to renting a space. Okay, we're also going to have a brief interlude because I just had a friend walk up into my front yard, and I think I want to share. So pardon the rude awakening as I shift the camera. Yeah, she just wandered up into the front yard and decided to, to sit under my tree. It's awesome living in a place where the wildlife is just around all the time. So uh, with that distraction, uh, we'll get back into it. So having read through this particular fairy tale, uh, The Henpecked Giant, it's all about <laughs> the woes of being single and then the woes of being married. And to be careful that you don't marry a mischievous woman. So this seems to reinforce the maybe now's not the right time to, to open a physical shop location. So we're going to return that to the shelf for now. Another form of bibliomancy that I have encountered comes to us from China. Um, there are a series of books that are used with coins uh, that you flip to see heads or tails to direct you to the proper page. Um, the version that I have is the Ling Qi Ching, but there's also the I Ching and several other variations of this, where you prepare your coins Traditionally, they are made out of wood, and you have 12. And whether they are up, right, or face down in the order of flips tells you which page to go to. This one I am less familiar with, because I, even though I've owned the book for a while, I haven't experimented with it much. It just bears mentioning that there are other forms of bibliomancy as well that I'm still learning about from other portions of the world. The last way that I would typically do this is using a book that directs you to another form of divination. So something like this, a oh, book of tarot spreads. One where you go, okay, what spread do I need today? And you just flip it open and then you would, well, I was looking. So let's Flip there. Oh, actually, this was a very good fit for my question. For religious, social, and cultural harmony in a multicultural community. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that reading later. But as I said, this is just supposed to be a, a quick introduction to bibliomancy and how you could potentially use it. I don't use it super often. I have found other methods are more effective for me, but it is one that is worth knowing about because in today's day and age, almost everyone can find some sort of book or pamphlet, some sort of written word that they can then use in this method of divination. So that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and if you really liked it, please share it with someone else. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends.